Mary Kate. And I'm Ashley. I'm Ashley Olsen. And I'm Mary Kate Olsen. I'm Mary Kate. I'm Ashley. Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen were stars before they could walk. They had some kind of magic. Rich before they could count. They were the youngest self-made millionaires in the history of the United States. And called all the shots before they were legal. Yes, my bosses were 17-year-old uh, gals and lovely. And I'm not just saying this because they're my boss. This is Mary Kate and Ashley, an E! Entertainment Special. Roll the graphic. From toddlers to teenagers, the twins loved the camera, and the camera loved them. That feels normal that's because all, yeah. that's how we know it. Mary Kate and Ashley turned their given names into brand names. We continue to love working with our design team, creating fashion and lifestyle products. And built a billion dollar empire. They were able to grow this gargantuan business very quietly and, and to some degree under the radar. But growing up in the spotlight had a serious downside. I've seen some pretty weird stuff. Like the big creepy men that like follow you everywhere. Yeah. And they're like, can you picture? They're just finding their sexuality and who they are and they're owning it. They're just doing it in front of the whole world. It's like everybody's waiting for us to mess up. Once they were the queens of tweens. Now they're one sizzling sister act. Coming up, trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. On April 29, 2004, Mary Kate Olsen and her twin sister Ashley became the youngest celebrities to receive stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Mary Kate and Ashley became famous while still in diapers and they're well on their way to becoming Hollywood icons. These girls are, you know, cottage industries. It's the Olsen twins, they have record labels, clothing deals. I mean, there's nothing that they haven't tapped into in terms of multimedia. Together, the girls created their own empire built on a squeaky clean image that millions of fans and their parents adore. Mary Kate and Ashley represent a lot of good things. They're smart, they're wholesome, they're poised, well mannered young ladies. But Mary Kate and Ashley put the world on notice. They're not kids anymore. Mary Kate, turn your shoulders to me a little bit. Right there. And the billion dollar question is this Will their tween age fans buy the hipper, hotter look? Very nice. June 13, 1986. Dave and Jarnett Olson raced to Valley Presbyterian Hospital near Sherman Oaks, California. The couple was expecting their second child. They got a bonus they were not expecting. Oh my God, I've got three instead of two. I mean, your car's not big enough. I mean, you don't have enough seats all of a sudden. There's not enough rooms in the house all of a sudden. It's going, oh, I don't know. <laughs> the Olsons named their bundles of joy Ashley Fuller and Mary Kate Olson. Ashley was born at 9.43 a.m. Mary Kate, two minutes later. We're fraternal. Now, what does that mean? That means that we're not exactly alike, but we are still twins. Once you get to know us, it seems that, like, that we're different. Dave and Jarnett had their hands full with the babies and two-year-old big brother, Trent. Showbiz was the last thing on their minds. It was just a fluke. Uh, Jarney was with a girlfriend of hers, and it was her girlfriend that was visiting uh, an agent for her daughter. It had come up that we had twins, and the agent said, you know, we, we need twins, you know, for shows at times, so uh, how about sending some photographs? In? The pictures soon landed on the desk of Joel Zwick. Zwick was directing a TV pilot called Full House. The script called for a baby girl. Joel wanted a backup you get only a certain amount of filming time that you can put a baby under hot lights. And basically, you needed to have a second baby to bring in to continue shooting. Yeah! <laughs> the Olsen girls were exactly what Zwick was looking for. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Good thinking, Joy. Keep it fresh. Full House debuted on ABC in the fall of 1987. 
The series starred John Stamos and two relatively unknown stand-up comics, Bob Saget and Dave Coulier. Early reviews were harsh. Okay, hold her up. I'll clean her off. Good idea. It was universally panned. It wasn't focused for the intelligent, older audience. It was a definitely family audience show. Ratings steadily increased, and the sitcom soon found a loyal audience. Season 2 got underway in 1988. ABC execs made Full House the backbone of the network's Friday night lineup. It was very rare to raise babies on television. We bit the bullet and said, well, let's just keep them and let them grow up on television and see what happens. What happened was Full House took off. Over the next two seasons, Michelle Tanner became the show's most popular character. Watching the series makes, you know, they're like little home videos. And it'll take you back to that scene and that moment and that day and other things that had happened that day. Or the gag reels. Yeah, you watch the gag reels when things went wrong or whatever it was, and that'll bring you back to that moment, too. By 1989, Full House was a top ten hit. Mary-Kate and Ashley were a big reason why, but the show's success wasn't reflected in the girls' paychecks. When they renegotiated their deal around 1990, Robert Thorne, who had become their attorney at that time, took them from $4,000 an episode to $25,000 an episode overnight. You got it, dude. I was aghast at how low they were being paid. Robert Thorne also became the first person to recognize the potential of Mary-Kate and Ashley beyond Full House. <laughs> By 1992, the sitcom was still going strong. In October, Mary-Kate and Ashley crossed over into music, recording their first song, Brother for Sale. Attorney Robert Thorne brought in music publicist Michael Pagnotta to promote the release. Robert wisely thought that he might be able to make an album or a video where they would be Mary-Kate and Ashley and not the Full House twins. A brother's not for sale, not for any price. The album went on to sell 325,000 copies. That same year, the girls starred in their first made-for-TV movie, to Grandmother's House We Go. She always gets the good hat. That's because I'm a good girl. In 1993, Thorne set up Dual Star Entertainment. The company was solely devoted to producing projects for the girls. We knew it was our company, and, you know, we knew at that point that, you know, no is a full sentence. And if we didn't feel like doing something, we weren't forced to do it. Then, in a bold move that defied Hollywood convention, Mary Kate and Ashley were named founders and co executive producers for Dual Star. They were only six years old. It didn't cause a huge uh, flurry or controversy, but people saw it more as, you know, a marketing stunt. And, you know, to a large degree, it was. But Mary Kate and Ashley were the real deal. Here we are. By 1993, Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen were sitcom veterans. Whoa, baby! Full House was in its sixth season, and the twins' credits included a successful album and a TV movie. Fans loved watching the girls grow up before their eyes. Mary Kate and Ashley were also mini moguls. The seven year olds owned their own production company and were the youngest producers in Hollywood history. Little did they know that they were multi-millionaires at that particular point. Hello. They were the youngest self-made millionaires in the history of the United States. The money was put in trust. The girls couldn't touch a dime for more than a decade until their 18th birthdays. Meanwhile, there were fears on the set of Full House that the girls were being exploited. We were concerned about the fact that the girls were being overworked. We were concerned about the fact that they weren't getting kid time. There was never a time that I can remember where they would look at me and say, I don't want to go out and do this. Because if there was a time, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have had to do it. Mary Kate and Ashley were the main attractions on Full House. Okay, let's stand by here. To capitalize on their popularity, the girls cranked out two more TV movies. First was Double Double Toil and Trouble. Next came How the West Was Fun. This town ain't big enough for the three of us. 
Then they hit the mother load. Home video. Their first directed video release, The Adventures of Mary Kate and Ashley, was a runaway hit. Olsen and Olsen Mystery Agency. We solve any crime by dinner time. Or else. The time they started making these videos, you either had to be an animated character or a purple dinosaur to have any impact in children's entertainment. So Mary Kate and Ashley came in and they were like little girls that your little girl could relate to. More videos followed. Every title listed Mary Kate and Ashley as producers, and the twins knew exactly what they were doing. Super, super Snoop. I never forget a scene where we were on uh, one of the the half hour videos when they were on we were on a cruise line. One of the scenes, the fellow had a briefcase, and you know they cut the scene, and uh, they started up again. And Ashley said, "You had the briefcase, you got it in the wrong hand." And I'm going, "Wow." The Mary Kate and Ashley phenomenon reached a largely untapped market called tweens. Eight to 14 year old girls who were too old for toys, but too young for boys. It was a, a very canny move to step into this medium video and, and records at a time when there was a hunger for product for kids. By 1994, Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen weren't just child stars, they were a conglomerate. Who would you be? Choose your but Dave and Jarnette Olson kept the egos of their famous daughters in check. They focused on raising children, not child actors. I would not consider Jarney or Dave their parents, uh, stage parents at all. Their dad would come down on tape night, but they were not like hovering parents and pushing them or anything. And they've always been in regular school, even if they were working three weeks and a week off during full house. When we're working, we have a teacher on the set with us, and we'll do our schoolwork there. And when we're not, we just go to regular school. By the eighth season of Full House, Mary Kate and Ashley were earning a cool $150,000 per episode each. Ratings remained solid. However, the show became too pricey to produce. And in February 1995, ABC canceled Full House. The tears that were flowing at that last curtain call were pretty outrageous. And yes, the little girls were touched too. We saw them probably as much as our family at home. The end of Full House left many wondering if the twins were has-beens at age eight. Mary Kate and Ashley dealt with yet another split shortly after Full House ended. Dave and Jarnett filed for divorce in July of 1995. I think we handle it very mature. We're like, you know, if they're going to be happier apart, and we want to support our parents. But at that time, you know, you don't really realize kind of what's going on. But for us, um, we had so you know, we knew, you know, we knew exact, we knew, you know, situations were you know, different and changing. You know, it was we were all there for each other. Dual Star President Robert Thorne turned the Mary Kate and Ashley brand into a profit machine. Their company continued to crank out more videos in the Adventures of Mary Kate and Ashley series. Get ready for the party of a lifetime with Mary Kate and Ashley. Then, in November 1995, a whole new franchise was created. Oh, awesome party. The Dance and Sing Along series, You're Invited. Party hats. We've got everything we could ever need. A real good time, yeah, is guaranteed. You're invited. We sing a lot in our videos, but... We're not the best singers in the world, so it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> in February 1996, Dave and Jarnett Olson's divorce became final. They shared joint custody of their four children who lived with their father most of the time. Just, you know, we, they were really there and just gave us bunches of love. It was difficult, sure, at first, but uh, I mean, Jarnett and myself, our concern really is the children. It's worked out well. We've worked around what's best for the kids. We knew that, like, and our parents, we knew, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't our, our fault, right. you know. And, and we also um, had our brother and our sister, and we were all really close, so I think we were all there for each other. Meanwhile, the girls kept working. Video sales were booming. Those videos are typically selling about two million units each, and those videos retail for anywhere from twelve to fifteen dollars. I would guess that they would be making about five million dollars a year. Other Olsen products, including CDs, books, and dolls, raked in even more cash, 
another 45 million bucks, making the girls successful, rich, and busy. In September 1998, Mary Kate and Ashley returned to network television on the ABC series Two of a Kind. But the magic the girls enjoyed on Full House was missing. ABC canned Two of a Kind after just one season. At 12 years old, Mary Kate and Ashley experienced their first career failure. We kind of expected it, I think. For us, you know, we were very young and we had a good time doing it, but we were used to that. We were used to doing something for a little while and moving on and trying something that else. That's how Full House was. That's how Full House was and, and all of our little videos. And we had other things going for us, so we didn't, you know, we were young. We never felt like that was the end. Mary Kate and Ashley went back to what they knew best direct to video movies. The cash continued to pour in, but the demand for more and more product put enormous pressure on the twins. They always have each other. There are things they know and understand between each other that none of us really do. They're each other's best support mechanism and each other's best friend. Maybe in the future we'll do something different, but, but for right now I can't like imagine doing something without, without Ashley. <laughs> By 2000, Mary Kate and Ashley's combined net worth totaled nearly $20 million. Dualstar employed some 50 people, and the Olsen brand was worth more than $60 million. If the pressure was getting to Mary Kate and Ashley, they didn't show it. And they were only 13 years old. Coming up. By 2000, Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen were the tween queens of home video. With more than 20 hit releases, the sister act ruled the marketplace, and they were only getting warmed up. Fourteen-year-old Mary Kate and Ashley had millions in the bank. They lived with Dad, Dave, a successful real estate developer. They also spent time with Mom, Jarnett. But the drill was the same in both households. The twins did chores to earn their allowance. It was $7 a week. And now it changed a little bit because it's, <laughs> it's $50 a week, but if you miss one day and if there's one thing on the floor, you don't get anything for the whole week. They weren't the breadwinners in the household. The dad was successful in his business, and their mom was very happy in her role taking care of the family. The girls learned to rely on their family and each other for moral support. They play off each other. If one's having a good day or a bad day, the other will pick up for it. They just always kind of balance each other out. We have this little thing, you know, when we love each other, we'll squeeze each other like three times, and then we'll squeeze each other, then I'll squeeze her hand back like four times. Like, I love you, too. Still, like all sisters, Mary Kate and Ashley did not agree on everything. Well, I mean, when it comes cool. to, like, little, like, petty things, yeah, I mean, of course, you know, Close. she's wearing my jeans or I'm wearing her jeans, and then, you yeah. know, <laughs> we want to wear them, <laughs> and no one will take them off. Yeah. Um, you know, we fight about stuff like that. But mostly, Mary Kate and Ashley worked. Who knew hard work could be so hard? And who knows, you know? You keep working this hard, someday you'll have your own business and people will work for you. In 2001, the twins developed their own sitcom. So Little Time debuted on the ABC Family Channel in June. The show echoed their real lives, twin sisters dealing with high school and their parents' separation. It was a ratings champ. And the girls had a blast. They loved the show. They were older, so their, their characters were older. We're here! Despite their hectic lives, the teenage girls were still very much teenage girls. What's going on down there? Nothing! One of the scandalous things that the girls have ever told us is that they had found out where this really cute young actor lived and they'd do drive-bys, you know, by his house. I miss them uh, because they were really fun to torture. I told Mary Kate that her hair was very, very frizzy and that she was going to have some problems with it if she didn't attend to it immediately. Okay, sometimes you just get caught up in the moment. And, and she said, well, what should I do? I said, pour olive oil all over it for two days and just wrap it in gauze. 
She immediately went to craft service and started pouring olive oil on her head. <laughs> Mary Kate's olive oil treatment didn't catch on, but the twin sense of style did. The time was right for the Olsons to add fashion designers to their already impressive resumes. The truth was is that we were taking, you know, like designer adult clothes and cutting them down to our size because there was nothing really that we could find that um, was cool or like had, you know, its own sort of style. And um, so we were like, hey, start a clothing line. We'd see the kids come and try to emulate what they were wearing. And, you know, that's when we would talk about the clothing line. You guys look so pretty in the clothes. Do you like them? Yeah. yeah. We knew there was a buyer out there because we knew this product wasn't available at the time we entered the marketplace. That year, Walmart signed on to distribute the Mary Kate and Ashley line of tween fashions. Linking up with Walmart, uh, we think was a great move. They had immediate access to uh, millions of customers across the country. Mary Kate and Ashley worked on their new venture between takes on so little time. It was bringing everything to them, either it was in the wardrobe room or it was in the dressing room, we would sit down and we'll change things, no, I don't like that, throw that out, change this neckline. When Mary Kate and Ashley approve something, that says to the consumer that this is cool and it's not a mom approved thing, it's a Mary Kate and Ashley approved item. Sales took off and the product line quickly expanded to include everything from bubble bath to bedding. And it just kind of started from a sportswear line and now there's, what, 47 categories from hair products to clothing and shoes and everything else. This is no way out! As the year wore on, the girls wore out. Mary Kate and Ashley decided to call it quits after one successful season on So Little Time. They were done. They had done it all their lives and they decided after a year we really can't do this anymore. They were coming to an age where they started to like boys and wanted to spend time with their friends. It was the you know third you know series we'd done, and when you're on a series, it's kind of the same thing every day. And I think at that time in our lives, we just really wanted to be at school and with our family and enjoying other things. Without the demands of a weekly series, the girls were free to focus on fashion. We've always wanted to be fashion designers. I mean, besides acting, like, that's what we've always wanted. And, yeah, if I was in acting, I'd want to be a fashion designer. In 2001, the girls presented their Walmart line in a runway show called Fashion Forward. We've done a lot in our careers, but this is the most exciting thing we've done yet, a brand new fashion line, and we think you're going to love it. Sales shot through the roof. The first year, uh, the brand brought in about $300 million through the Walmart channel. One of the strongest and one of the biggest actual team brands out there in the marketplace today. The fraternal twins shared equal billing in business and at home. But in Hollywood, the seesaw suddenly tilted towards Mary-Kate. She earned a daytime Emmy nod for so little time. Ashley didn't. It makes no sense. Like There's no reason I should be nominated, not her. No reason at all. So it's weird but you know but I'm so excited for her and this is just exciting for both of us by 2001 kids everywhere scrambled for the Mary Kate and Ashley line of videos designer clothes and accessories at an age when most girls cruised the malls and chased boys these 15 year old twins ran a multi-million dollar empire In October 2001, Mary Kate and Ashley hit a new high. The Hollywood Reporter published a special issue featuring the girls on the cover. The fact that the twins are owners in control of their company and their fate creatively and financially uh, gave them a certain degree of clout. In fact, Mary Kate and Ashley enjoyed a lot of clout. Three months later, the Hollywood Reporter listed the young tycoons at number 100 on the Women in Entertainment Power 100 list. They joined some elite company, including Julia Roberts and Oprah Winfrey. A few prolific players who didn't make the cut were bent out of shape. We did get calls from some people. I mean, it's one thing to be preempted by Julia Roberts, but it's another thing to be preempted by a teenage girl. The sniping didn't bother Mary Kate and Ashley. They were too busy building their company dual star into an even bigger empire. Everything gets approved by them. Nothing gets their name on it without them knowing about it. I want them to be good businesswomen first, and then actresses next, you know, so they can be responsible to themselves and others around. 
But on the other side of the fence, they're very much regular teenagers where they listen to pop music, like all the trends, flip through teen magazines. Mary-Kate and Ashley's agenda was clear. They wanted their evolving style to reflect their individual personalities. It wasn't like a manager decision, okay, no more twins. It was no, it was like they're growing up, they don't want to look alike. We make a wish that we're not twins anymore, and that we're completely different, splendid. As anyone grows up, you, you know, you have your own style. When you're younger, you just kind of go along with everything and don't really care. And then you grow up and you kind of, I guess, grow into your own. Ashley, may, I would say, is a little more sophisticated and she's like a Chanel girl. Mary-Kate's a little more funky and eclectic and loves to accessorize. It's kind of like our own personalities and you know, come out their clothes. Still, the girls couldn't shake the tag that followed them since they were babies, the Olsen twins. We say them as one long word, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, same thing. We don't think of them as individuals. The girls tried repeatedly to change that, asking the media to refer to them as Mary Kate and Ashley. That was literally something that, you know, was brought up when we were 10, so about, you know, seven or eight years ago, and people are just getting it's it now. So funny. <laughs> the girls expressed their individuality in other areas as well, namely boys. He kissed you? <laughs> so? The fellas that they've dated have just been really good, you know, people, so uh, I'm happy with their, their decision so far, anyways. <laughs> In 2002, Ashley began dating Matt Kaplan, who was two years ahead of her in school. Mary-Kate remained single. Ashley's boyfriend's adorable, and he's very easygoing, and Mary-Kate really likes him. Mary-Kate and Ashley are good friends, and so, you know, they hang out together with, with uh, Ashley's boyfriend and some other girls, and it's great. When the girls weren't hanging with Matt, they returned to their first love. No matter where we are, we go shopping. They're very conscious of, they look at price tags, you know, they're asking me, what do you think? Think this is too much. However, on their 16th birthday in June 2002, Mary, Kate, and Ashley made an exception. They splurged on matching Range Rovers at $75,000 a pop. And now people are going to be watching how they spend and watching how they live their lives and see if they're spoiled brats, if they're super indulgent, or if they're just girls with good heads on their shoulder that happen to be worth $150 million a piece. It's like everybody's waiting for us to mess up, and that's what they've been focusing on and you know we're it's... just focusing on growing up and living our lives were they ever the girls blossomed into striking young women the paparazzi stepped up their pursuit of the twins i, I mean it kind of just comes with the territory and i guess you just kind of have to accept it i mean you know a lot of the times i get flustered if i see someone taking my picture or being followed sometimes um you're being followed or they'll like jump in front of your car and you can't like get the keys in and then the windshield wipers keep going. They went to Malibu just to go lay on the sand and you have a, a couple fellas there with cameras trying to get right in their face and they're just trying to have a little picnic at the beach. So that's not fun. Still, whenever Hollywood rang, the sisters always picked up. In 2002, Drew Barrymore called and asked if they wanted to appear in Charlie's Angels 2 full throttle. Oh my God, it was so exciting. Um, you know, we've always been, you know, really big fans of Drew, and um, I don't know, it was very cool. It was a huge honor. We were kind of, we were very giddy. We were giddy little girls. <laughs> the cameo roles landed Mary, Kate, and Ashley alongside three of Hollywood's hottest actresses, Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, and Lucy Liu. Meanwhile, thousands of websites counted down the minutes till Mary, Kate, and Ashley turned 18 and became legal. I've heard about them, but obviously they got way too much free time on their hands. I mean, my God. There's been some pretty weird stuff. But, like the big creepy men that like follow you everywhere, <laughs> and they're like, can we picture? And they're like 40 years old, and they're like sweating. <laughs> and they have these pictures of us when we're like 12. <laughs> On June 13, 2003, Mary, Kate, and Ashley turned 17. Later that year, they posed for Rolling Stone magazine. The provocative cover caused a stir. And the minute that their picture hit the cover of Rolling Stone, I think we began to announce that this is a whole new world, uh, that these two are grown up and they're hot and they can do it all. 
Rolling Stone called the twins America's favorite fantasy. You know, we just kind of has, have presented ourselves the way that we are and the way that we feel comfortable being. And I guess it's other people commenting on, you know, just us growing up. I, I don't, we've never really, you know, like we didn't present, give ourselves we've that never title or anything. A sexier look or anything. We're just kind of growing up the way we are and we do things um, that we're comfortable doing. They're just evolving like any young girl does into a woman. They're just finding their sexuality and who they are and they're owning it. They're just doing it in front of the whole world. Coincidentally, I, that's the way I'm moving my image as well. I'm, I'm definitely going sexier rather than the, you know, that kind of squeaky clean, nerdy kind of thing. And action! Mary Kate and Ashley decided the big screen was the best place to strut their stuff. In association with Warner Brothers Pictures, the girls developed New York Minute, an action comedy flick that followed two 17-year-old sisters on a wild romp through Manhattan. How am I supposed to relax? My relaxation tips are in my deep cleaner. <laughs> Snap out of it! We could relate to the script. We saw a, little, a lot of potential to um, add certain things like comedy and action, loving moments. They were really, really anxious to leave sort of that tween image behind. It's been very tricky for the movie, for all of us, because, you know, we don't want to alienate their core audience. This is their move into young adulthood. This movie gets probably a little bit more risque than the other ones with the kissing scene. Both of them were doing their first big screen kiss. There was a little bit of anxiety about that. And they're calling their friends, and their friends saying, you know, these guys are hunk of chunks of burning love, you know, go for it, it's going to be great, don't worry about it. As stars and executive producers of the film, Mary Kate and Ashley work double duty. I love producing. You can get so much free stuff. We learned so much on that set. The cool thing was being able to go to them and say, put on your producer hat for a second. You know, is this the way you'd say this? Is this what you'd really wear? You forget that they're 17-year-old girls. It seemed like almost every couple shots, they were discussing what wouldn't, wouldn't work for them. Danny was, you know, very respectful and very deferential to their opinion. It's great because if you don't like a line, you can change it and you have a say in everything. The movie was shot on location in Toronto and New York. No one in the cast escaped Olsen mania. The whole town would show up. I mean, hundreds of kids. That was for me. Uh, I think they were under the misapprehension that uh, all these kids were out to see them. I think uh, those were my fans. I saw a girl, like, pass out crying, like, literally pass out on the ground, and I was scared I was going to give her CPR, but uh, she was 12. <laughs> and I don't know CPR. <laughs> Between girls weren't the only fans who turned out to get a glimpse of the Olsons. There was a lot of 15-year-old boys, too. And they were in love with them. True to form, Mary Kate and Ashley never let the huge crowds affect their attitude or their work. The thing that struck me was for, for two kids who have all this power, you know, and money and stuff going for them at, the, at this age, they have really handled it well, you know? They, they really have their, their feet on the ground. They're very connected with their siblings. Their dad was always there. I mean, this was a family, and clearly this whole thing has been managed really in a very healthy and, and ingenious way, frankly. I can't say I got to take, take that much credit, and we have a family of six. So uh, they're just two within the group. My youngest kids are on a t-ball team. The girls came out and watched. Now, our parents did a really good job, you know, raising us, and we've always been at, you know, at a regular school with regular people, and. I think also we were, we feel very fortunate to be doing what we're doing and, you know, and I don't know, we appreciate every day. I've never worked with a star that learned every name of every member on the crew and that when they were off screen, they were knitting scarves for everybody. Scarves, you say? I didn't get one. By October, production kicked into high gear. The dual roles of producer and actor proved challenging and the girls found it difficult to juggle all their commitments. It's really hard at times. It's their senior year. You know, they, they want to enjoy all the activities in school, uh, and yet there's a commitment to the movie. It's been a challenge. Still, Mary Kate found time to squeeze in one more interest, David Katzenberg, 
son of DreamWorks co-founder Jeffrey Katzenberg. Ashley and Matt's relationship continued going strong. They double dated, they did things together, and I, I didn't see any friction at all. They've been lucky, they, you know, have boyfriends that get along. Meanwhile, the release of New York Minute was planned to coincide with Dual Star's new global marketing campaign. Hi, everyone. This is a busy year for us. Right now, our fashions and lifestyle products are in stores in the U.S., Canada, England, and Australia. And soon the products will be in stores in Mexico, France, Ireland, Northern Ireland, New Zealand, Spain, Italy, Benelux, Israel, Scandinavia, South Africa, Argentina, Brazil, Germany, Japan, and even China. Wow. Wow is right. What began with a line of direct-to-video movies exploded into a worldwide retail enterprise worth nearly a billion dollars. Coming up. By early 2004, Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen abdicated their throne as queens of tweens. The 17-year-old entertainment moguls sported a sexy new image and got their first real taste of negative publicity. In the May 3, 2004 issue of People magazine, rumors of drug use and eating disorders were reported. Ashley denied the accusation, saying, we don't have problems. Mary-Kate added, there's nothing to worry about. Meanwhile, more headlines. Just two days before the release of New York Minute, Ashley and Matt Kaplan split after three years. Later that month, Mary Kate and Ashley joined the ranks of Justin Timberlake, Cameron Diaz, and Ben Affleck as hosts on Saturday Night Live. They had to decide between hosting Saturday Night Live and their senior prom. And is that really a fair choice for a 17-year-old to make? I mean, they're both once-in-a-lifetime events, you know? So what do you do? They talked with us, and they made a very deliberate decision. And they're going to host. Yeah. You know what? Seriously, it probably has been one of the biggest decisions to make. Um, no, I mean, like, that's kind of how we've always gone through, you know, our lives. It was, you know, school and work. And, um, you know, sometimes you have to miss out on some things to be able to do other things. And, you know, it's kind of like a balancing act. But, I mean, how often does that opportunity come up? Mary Kate and Ashley also got ready for another challenge, New York University. The Gallatin School at NYU is a, a terrific uh, program because they can uh, cater a curriculum around their activities. I just think that New York has a really good energy and I also think that if you're from the West Coast and you've always grown up, at least for us in LA, I think it's smart to experience both sides and because it's completely different cultures and like a different world. A lot of their friends go to NYU, but I think they're a little apprehensive also about being 3,000 miles away. The girls prepared to run Dual Star from the company's New York office. Their future plans might include something Mary Kate and Ashley have never done before separate projects. They've talked about it amongst themselves that, you know, they'd like to try, you know, a, a movie individually at some point in time. They don't see themselves being 25 and acting in twin movies all the time. We'll hopefully always, you know, work together in some way. But even if we work separately, which we, you know, we fully support each other. In the meantime, one twin revealed she'll face a bigger battle alone. In June 2004, Mary Kate entered a treatment facility for a health-related issue. People magazine confirmed that Mary Kate has an eating disorder and that her family finally intervened. Her dad um, would do things to her, like she got in a car accident about a year and a half ago and he wouldn't let her have a Range Rover back unless she ate some more. And she was actually taken out of high school just to eat. Mary Kate's rehab was expected to take at least three months. Friends and family promised encouragement and support. Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen first appeared on TV as spirited kids in diapers. Today, they control a vast empire that includes movies, home videos, CDs, fashion, and accessories. But the girls also control something even more valuable, their own fate. I think they bought the future, didn't they? I think they actually uh, purchased the future. They, the future is theirs. I hope that the media doesn't put extraordinary expectations onto them. Because um, I saw the Tara Reid Eat Your Hollywood story, and I'm still recovering.
I'm Ashley Olson. And I'm Mary Kate Olson. <sighs> <laughs> I can't. Okay, we'll send it it's to okay. Clark. Okay. It's okay. It's just videotape, so it doesn't matter. And you're watching E. Ah! <laughs> and you're watching E. Okay. <sighs> Hi, I'm Mary. <laughs> you're Mary Kate. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Ashley Olson. And I'm Mary Kate Olson. And you're watching E! Entertainment Television.